What is up, everybody? Ness here. Welcome back to George Mass. Today, we're heading immediately into what looks like the King's Chamber. Anyway, walking up here, we will see... Oh, insolent one who has brought the unthinkable into a land as dark as Ikana. He closes this, but thankfully, one of the Garo earlier that we took down gave us a hint about this. My servants have fallen namelessly, so I didn't... I was talking. However... The darkness in which my servants live is, after all, fleeting. You shall see with your own eyes. Just what kind of thing true darkness really is. And they kind of laugh at us. I actually don't know any of these characters' names. But first things first, we knew, thanks to our Garo friend that we took down in the last episode. Was it last episode or the one before? Either way, we were told to relinquish the light from the ceiling and I'm getting, I'm getting crushed. Okay. I'm bad! I'm gonna get crushed again! Alright, hold on. Yo, that was such a clean shot between the guy that was- a, Oh, there's a bone in my face. Wait, don't take that out of con- Don't! Do not- Do not take that out of context. Anyway, now let's see. What are these guys- Oh. Just keep defending and watch his movements. I think I'm starting to see his weak point, okay? And you? Just keep defending it. So yeah, I've taken like three hits and I've taken one heart. Now, you might be watching, why do you have the Bremen mask equipped if we equip this? They look at each other and then they start dancing with us and our stupid song. I'm actually really tired of the song already. I've listened to it doing the chickens in the ranch so many times in my stinking life. I was like, are they going to start hitting me? Now, another thing to do here is if we equip the captain's hat, we can see walking up to this man. <laughs> Dead silent. Oh, Akita! Is that not Captain Kita? He's like two inches tall. <laughs> but you're so... Tiny! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was nearly fooled by what you have done. Look at him shaking his head like sands. Alright, now on to the actual fight here. So, bringing these guys over, well, not I need to not be in the light. Bringing these guys over, close, we're just going to be waiting for a spin attack opportunity, and then we melt them down with the light, easy peasy, no big deal. And then he pulls out his sword. Now, this fight is a, more of a challenge. He has one move that I, I really don't know how to defend against. Stick with using the basic target method while defending. He's a different rank than those other two lackeys, though. Yeah, so, I don't... I, there's one attack he does, that I, if he does it, I'll say it, but like, uh, I don't actually know what a good strategy for this guy is. I'm, I'm gonna assume that Deku Nuts are probably pretty broken, but with that, we light him, easy peasy. So, he has an attack where he takes off his head, and it follows you around the room and will bite you, and I have no idea how to avoid it at all. At all. You're blocking me, get out of the way, I can still get him. Blocking you? The reason he beat us is because you are so feeble. Don't blame this on me. What? Just try saying that again in my bony face. Mmm, feeble, 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 foo, feeble, foo, fee, fo, feeble. Shut up already. Uh, don't look at me. I was once called the best swordsman in all of Kana. The greatest swordsman in all of Kana? You? Feeble! Draw your weapon. Huh? I'm telling you to draw your sword. Uh, how? <laughs> Fuck, th this is a funny skeleton crew. This is definitely Papyrus and Sans before Undertale ever existed. Will you stop? What fools? Haven't you begun to understand? And this is WD Gaster? Oh no, I've revealed that I'm a total Undertale nerd. The kingdom being ruined and us left in this state. <coughs> Isn't it petty? Little battles like this that have caused it? Oh, that was a continuate, continuative thought, isn't it? Petty little battles like this that have caused it. Believing in your friends and embracing that belief by forgiving failure, these feelings have vanished from our hearts. It all happened after somebody thrust open the doors of that stone tower. You who bring light into darkness, I am the king of Akana Kingdom, Igos du Ikana. The spell binding that had been cast up upon us was broken by that light which you carry. To return true light to this land, you must seal the sto steal the stores. Seal the doors of Stone Tower where the winds of darkness blow. 
The stone tower is an impenetrable stronghold. Hundreds of soldiers from my kingdom would not even be able to topple it. And yet Link's going to do it by himself. It is far too reckless for one to take such a challenge. And so, I grant you a soldier who has no heart who will not falter in the darkness. Bow, 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 bow. I love this song. This is definitely one of my favorite songs. I feel like I've said that about every single song. But, like, this one is... Ah, uh, the creepy, the creepy pasta of this. He's 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 drowned. Ben is here. Ben, if you're watching, I don't know how you're watching because you're you drowned. It happened so many years ago. You got caught in the pool and you drowned, and then you infected that one N64 cartridge. And ah, uh, it's so it's it's still creepy. I've heard rumors, not I don't know, rumor theory that the face is supposed to be based on Miyamoto, but I just don't see it. It's a mystical song that allows you to shed a shell shaped in your current image. By playing the song while wearing masks to assume different forms, you'll be able to leave up to four empty shells, one for each form. Technically, three, since Deku Link is useless. This soldier who has no heart is your twin image, a shell of yourself that you will shed when your song commands it. Now, I know a lot of people on my kingdom shine the lights of justice. I know a lot of people have theories about this because it's like, when you play the song for the other forms, which we will see they take the form of what they looked like before they died. So this plays a lot into the theory about, oh, Link's actually been dead for years, and etc, etc. But anyway, we have a couple things that we need to do back in uh, Clock Town, so I'll meet you there. Wow, this is embarrassing. So we are here at the milk bar, and the whole reason we are here is because this fella right here, Mr. Mario himself, have a drink. What'll it be? Chateau for 200. That's fine. We're gonna take this. We're gonna chug jug with you. I'd really love to chug jug with you. We can be pro Fortnite gamers. And as you can see, our magic is blue. Now we've discussed this already, but... We're going to actually use this because we're going to be tackling Stone Tower. And I feel this is the perfect opportunity to actually utilize this. Now, we do have one more stop. I'll meet you there. So, we are at the Bank Man. And we... I don't know how many rupees we're going to be depositing, or gaining during this dungeon, but I figured we might as well empty our wallet just so that anything we gain can be, um, anything we gain can be gained up to 500, up just about 500 rather than having to get, like, we were at, like, 233, so we would only gotten 270, and so this is just a better, I, I think this is probably just the most optimal play. Now, we're at 1,200... And 30 rupees or something around there in the bank, which means we need another 3,700 ish, for like 3,750 3, ish, somewhere around there. But that shouldn't be too bad. You see, there's, there's two of these blue guys here running up here. There's another one of these blue guys here. This will become very important later, but for now, not the most important. Anyway, heading up this real creepy looking statue. I'm, I'm jinxed. Now, something that we've learned is that curses can be broken by the Song of Storms, which means if we get jinxed, now this is a non-issue. We can just get rid of it immediately. Anyway, heading into Stone Tower. I know a lot of people, this is their favorite dungeon in the game, and I it, it's, it's really good, but I feel like this dungeon is almost so big that it's overwhelming, especially if you count this part as part of the dungeon. But either way, we are going to be probably just taking off the bunny hood here because we need to be able to equip other things yeah we're fine so this area is pretty interesting we're climbing the tower up oh right through the rock because link's invincible during his entire hookshot animation so not a problem we're gonna be using our hookshot to climb now i was actually having a discussion with one of my friends about the time mechanic and I'll get it into it more in a second now what does this button do this button raises this platform up awesome but what we really need is all of them moved up at the same time so utilizing our our powers here 
I missed the buttons down below, so I'm gonna have to go back down, which kind of sucks, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We are gonna drop... We're gonna drop a Ling statue right here. Now, these statues can only be used in Ikana-related areas, so it's not like we're gonna be going dropping statues around across the entire map. But it would be cool if we could. Now, we will step on this one. I think... Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Drop another one here. And it in the 3DS remake, they did a great thing where when you play the song, after playing it once in an area, it doesn't make you watch the whole animation again, which is so good. It just automatically pops down the guy. Now, we'll take a peek at Dar Darunia here, Darmani. He has really small little feet, real big stomach, got the gash across the front. I don't think Link actually has that gash yet because he's not, you know, dead. Oh! Ooh, if I fell off the edge there, it would have been all over. I would have probably had to play the song another three times. But either way, putting on the Zora mask, the Deku mask is not uh, heavy enough to push down any switch at all. It is completely useless, which is like, I don't even know why they would program. I mean, they have to, they probably just wanted to program it in for the theme of it, but... Since we are not going to be seeing it, oh yeah, look at how creepy this is. Oh my god. So spooky. And since we're not going to be seeing it, I might as well play the Deku just right now, just so that we can take a look at it. So we're going to play Deku, Elegy of Emptiness, which a lot of, I feel like a lot of people probably haven't even seen this because it's not useful. But we'll at least show it off. As far as I know, it's not useful. I, I didn't even know it was orange. There he is. Little Deku, I got burned. I got hit by something and it burned me. And now I have to play this song another three times, dude. No. Wow. Just like a real Deku scrub, I got burned. Oh man, that's awful and miserable. It makes me feel bad. All right, fine. Wow, I, I can't believe that that happened. I genuinely can't believe it. I'm honestly distraught about it. Anyway, so I was going to talk about the time mechanic in this game. Something I think I was having a discussion with one of my coworkers about is how a lot of games have really cool mechanics and they'll utilize them really great in certain ways and then not in other ways. And I think something that I came to the conclusion about this game is like, it's incredible how they use the time mechanic, right? It's like one of the best time mechanics in any game that has time mechanics. It's so good and it, like all the side quests and everything, how they play into it, it's great. Especially for, uh, especially for like 2000, 2001, whenever this game, I'm pretty sure it came out in 2000 flat. But especially for that, right? Really cool. But I was realizing how the time mechanic literally has no impact on dungeons at all, which are like one of the main parts of Zelda games. Well, at least until Breath of the Wild came out and it was like, ah, oh, dungeons, you say, what are those? Which, I'm I'm hoping so much that Tears of the Kingdom has good dungeons. Me, me in like flat four months or whenever Tears of the Kingdom comes out, three months? I think it comes out like three months, May, right? Yeah. Me from then, I hope you watch back this video someday and you're happy that Tears of the Kingdom has a bunch of dungeons in it. And if it doesn't, ah, <sighs> sad. But, my point is that once you get into a dungeon, the time is just irrelevant at that point. There's no point to the timer. You do not need to worry about the timer at all in the dungeon, which is like, I, I was just thinking about it and I was like, man, that's, that kind of sucks. It's like the one part, like one of the major parts of the whole Zelda series and it's just completely irrelevant. Now, I don't, do I need to hit all of these switches again? Let me see. Where do these blocks go? Yes. Okay. So we're going to put down another statue right here. I don't think there's a particular order for any of these switches. I'm pretty sure as long as you hit them as you go up, they will work themselves out. I I feel like I in my brain I have memories of like having these things stuck somehow in a way where I had to un like get rid of the statues and then redo them, but I I don't know. I feel like I haven't seen that in like anyone's playthrough including my own in so long. So maybe it's just a false memory. Either way, we are slowly but surely making our way up Stone Tower. I never really under... Oh, camera. Don't do that, please. I never really understood what, like, these things on the walls are supposed to be. They kind of look like windows. They kind of look like prison cells that, like, you would hold somebody in. I... It's... It's such a weird aesthetic. 
I don't really know how to describe it. Um, now, if I'm thinking correctly here, we might be able to take a little shortcut. But I don't think I'm going to risk it at this point. We're basically up the tower at this point anyway. I mean, I think we have one more layer after these three switches, but... This is the full monotony of the experience with the LG of emptiness, and it's such it's such a ow, it's such a cool idea for a song, but it's they it's uh I wish it, I wish I almost wish it was an item instead of a song, honestly, like an item that just lets you pop down whatever thing you are. That's another thing that I was thinking about Out, outside of the Goron powder keg. There's no items that you can use as masked forms, without glitches, of course. And I feel like there's so much potential there for, like, you need to be able to shoot the switch that nobody can aim at, but if you're a Zora Link, you're taller, and then you can aim over whatever is blocking your... Like, stuff like that would be so cool. Or maybe you, not, you need to, like, put down a bomb and then go somewhere with the Goron, or, like, you need to pull something towards you. Like, maybe, like, if you're a Goron and you try to pull, like, yourself to a box, instead of the bo you going to the box, the box comes to you if it's, like, a small box or something. I don't know. These are all things for the next Zelda game. Nintendo, take notes. I'm I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Now, where, where exactly am I headed now? I'm so lost right now. Am I supposed to be going to that one? I think I can go there from here. I think it has enough range. I'm just not close enough. That's the opposite. Oh! I should show this off. I don't think I've talked about this at all. These boulders, you can punch these boulders with uh, Goron Link, and these boulders are not infinitely spawning. Once you get rid of them, they are gone in this area. And well, I mean, until you reload the area. Like, so. They run on weird cycles, and they teleport around, so it's very hard to tell which one's which. I swear. This is unbelievable. <laughs> No, dude, this is the worst. <laughs> I should have just equipped the bow. All right, I'll meet. I'll I'll meet you up there. So now that we are back up here, I am going to show you guys. Uh, this is the wrong switch. I think yeah. I think I need to hit the first switch, right? Uh, I forgot how the song works. Now that we're back up here, though, we're at the second layer currently. We're, I'm going to show you guys how the shortcut potential in this area works. On the second and the third uh, set of bricks, there's major shortcuts that you can take if you know what you're doing. Now, that's going to drop the middle one from before. We are going to go back down because I forgot to put the Zora mask on this switch. This is the one I need, right? The first one, the first block. Yes, we need the first block. Okay, so, put it on the Zora mask, playing the song once again. This is what, our, how many times have we played this song? Somebody... Somebody leave a comment with every amount of how many times we've played the song total in each video. I think, I think between now and the end of Stone Tower Temple, we're gonna play the song another nine times? Maybe, maybe like nine times? Nine more times? Unless I play badly and then it'll be significantly more. Wow, he's trying to get me down here? That's crazy. Okay, so you might be wondering, I have not hit all of the switches, how am I gonna get across? Well. What we can do is, we know the Zora is on the first switch, so we can get onto the block itself and then drop the Zora from the switch by putting him here on the block with us, which will, in a second, any day now, take him off the switch and we will fly up here. And the camera tries to go back to where we were, but then it follows us up here. Now this is the one that we got destroyed by last time. I think this is the second to last one in the whole area. Yeah. As you can see, there's the guys are still around. But we're going to make it up here to the very top. I believe this is the top one, right? I'm not crazy. Am I stupid? No. As you can see, there is an owl statue here. Which means we have officially conquered climbing the Stone Tower Temple. I think this is probably a good stopping point for now. Uh, you know what? Let's at least enter. The easiest way to enter... Not this one. The right one. The one we want is the right one, right? I'm not crazy. Yes, it comes all the way across, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, you might be asking, well, what's the point of doing it this way? The point is, every single time you do it this way, it saves you one full play of the Elegy of Emptiness. 
So if you enter and exit this dungeon multiple times, it literally will save more and more time the more times you do it, which is it's it's great. It's great. Basically, it all comes down. It saves time. Playing the LG twice instead of having to play it three times is definitely good. Now in the remaster, it's not that big of a deal because you can you can equip four items, so you don't have to pause the game to change masks. And then because this area has hookshot targets, so now there is something that. I will show later, but do note that there are a bunch of pots down there and re-deads. I actually didn't know there were re-deads down there. Okay! We are back down! Good thing that we have the Song of Soaring. So, next time guys, we'll enter that dungeon, but for now, <laughs> I can't believe I got so absolutely obliterated. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. I make sure to try to, uh, to subscribe, to reply to every comment that is left on the videos right now. It's great. I'm actually really enjoying talking to you guys and having some kind of discourse. But anyway, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 500. It is coming in close, closer and closer every day, which is great. And next time we will take on the Stone Tower Temple. So... Catch you guys back here tomorrow. Take care, everybody.